praise God for this day, and certainly this is a day the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in what God has done, and we come to magnify and glorify the name of our God. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and God is a greatly to be praised. We pray this, mo this morning that you would participate in our worship experience uh, as we share the word, as we come to you in music, uh, that you will participate in the worship experience on this Sunday morning. We're praising God for your life, and we're praising God for what God is about to do in our experience this morning. And today, as we come to worship you, we pray that you'll pray for this worship experience, that it'll be just as God desires it to be. We thank God for you, and we praise God for your life. As we come this morning with prayer, with scripture, we give God praise, and we give God honor for what he's going to do in the name of our God. Amen, as they come. I'll be coming from Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody just tell God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just before we pray, we just want to let God know that we love Him. Amen. Amen. Anybody else here love God? Amen. 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 Sometimes we just have to steal away and just tell God how much you appreciate Him. Amen, Jesus. Yes, I 
Sometime I got to tell the Lord I thank you Lord I thank oh, yeah, you Lord Yeah 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 yes Oh yes I do Oh, oh I thank Lord I thank you Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Today, our Heavenly Father, we just want to tell you thank you. God, we want to tell you thank you for everything that you already done, everything that you're getting ready to do. But God, we just want to say much obliged to what you're getting ready to do right now. And God, we give you glory and we give you praise for who you are, not just for what you can do, but God, we thank you for being God and God all by yourself. And God, we're asking you to bless our pastor and our first lady, God, as, and give them the knowledge that they need to teach your people. But God, most of all, give your people a listening ear to hear what you are about to say. And God, we just want to tell you, we appreciate you, God. We love you, God, because you first loved us. And God, you died on a rugged cross for us. And God, we just want to say thank you now. We want to say thank you that you didn't stay in a grave. But on that third day morning, God, you got up with all power in your hand. And God, we say thank you. And we'll be careful now to give you praise and to give you glory. For as in the name of Jesus we pray, and the people of God say, Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for that prayer. How many of y'all know that the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We invite y'all to come and worship and praise with us on this morning as we bless the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God the praise.
Move on to this worship song, and I invite you just to worship with me. Hallelujah. God, I bless you. Fade away. Don't know how, but you did it. Fade away. Standing. But holding on to faith, you know best. And nothing can catch you by surprise. You got this figured out, and you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can't win, wrap us in your arms and step in.
just says, because you are my strength. Hmm. Listen, he's strength like no other. How many of y'all believe oh, yes. that? Oh, yeah. He's like strength no like no other. My God, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. He reaches to me. Come on, how many of y'all believe that? You are my strength, your strength like no other, your strength like no other, Lord, you reach to me, come on, can I just say that one more time, say you are my strength, I feel that, I feel it, strength like no other. How many of y'all need strength? He's strength like no other. It reaches to me. Jesus, because it reaches to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lamb of God, there is strength like no other. There is none other like none other than the name of Jesus Christ. We praise God for your presence in this place as we, as you are at home worshiping, we are bringing God's house to your house. And we pray that while we are bringing God's house to your house, that you would invite God into your house, that God can be able to take up residence where you are right now. We give him glory and we give him praise for this worship experience 
And certainly we pray for those who are shut in. We pray for those who are sick. We want to remember uh, Casey and Thomas Atima. Also remember Evelyn uh, Cobbins as we come this morning. And God, we're praying that for their strength. We're praying that you would certainly continue to encourage them. We're praying for uh, Sister Inez Chambers. Uh, we pray that God would certainly uh, bless their lives at this point uh, of life. And God is able to, and he is a healer. God is able to deliver us from wherever situation we're in. This morning as we continue our series on man cave, as we continue to be able to share uh, this morning uh, with our men because if we're going to uh, change this world, then we must change uh, manhood. We must bring boys, make boys into men. And this morning as we continue this study, uh, this morning, we pray that you'll be blessed by what God has within his word as we enter into this man cave uh, that, be, that we can be able to esteem and lift God up and as also lift our men to where they need to be. If you turn your Bibles now to the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 12 is where our uh, text will be, uh, ch chapter 12 of Genesis Verses 1 through 3. Amen. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 uh, through 3. And it says, The Lord has said to Abram, uh, Go from your uh, country, uh, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse all the people on the earth will be through, blessed, he says, and curse all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. I want to talk about this morning as we share uh, this word on Man Cave this morning, uh, bless your children. How to bless your children. And we pray that you'll be blessed by uh, this word that God uh, gives us this morning. Let us bow here. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall on your people right now. God, I pray, God, that you'll bless us as we bring this word uh, to your people. And I pray, God, that we will encourage every man uh, to God to strengthen him and lift him up that he can also encourage our boys. And we thank you right now, God, that you're going to do a great things in this worship experience. God, I pray, God, that you'll regulate my mind. I prepare, but I need your power. I've studied, but God, I need your strength. I'm willing, but I need you, God, your ability to be able to help me do what I need to do for the glory of our God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this place today. And we pray God's blessings that those who are sitting, those who are there at home are worshiping with us, that you'll bless every house, that you'll bless every situation that's going on in anybody's life right now. Bless everyone that is connected to the St. Luke Church. We pray God's blessing, God, upon their lives right now. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Bless your children. God gives Abraham, and he gives him a great blessing. And We just read, he said to Abraham, he said, I want you to go from your country, your people, and all your household. And I'm going to take you to a land that I shall show you. And he said, Abraham, I'll tell you what's going to happen. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. And then he says, he said, and you will be a blessing. And he says to Abraham also, he said, I will bless those who blesses you, and those who curse you, I'm going to curse them. 
and all the people of the earth, he says, right in the text, he says, we'll be blessed through you. God is saying that to every man this morning. And he's saying that to every man as this man shares with his son. He said, he said man, I'm going to bless you and make you a great nation. God said, I'm going to bless every man that blesses his children. He said, I'm going to bless him because, he said, he said, all I'm going to bless him, he said, you will be a blessing. And I believe for our boys to be what God wants them to be in this world, we need men uh, that is going to bless their children. And this morning, as I share this word to you and with you this morning, I ask that you, the first thing that I want you to do is make a resolution. And the resolution that you will make this morning is that you will resolve to bless your children. And that you're going to make a resolution that I'm going to bless my children. And, about, and understand me today, my prayer is that all men, that all men will get God's vision in their head. And I believe by resolving to get God in their heads, they also get God inside their heart. Because if we can get men with God in their hearts, then we'll also have men that would instill this in their boys. Because if we make better boys, we'll make a better society. Because men, women, or girls are looking for men, and they need somebody to protect them and care for their life. So this morning, I come to tell you this morning that God uh, is in the business of blessing uh, every family. But he also wants that man uh, to lead his family and bless all of, of his children. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and it says this. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all uh, your strength. He said, look, 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 he comes to Moses. Moses, he said, this is what I want you to share with the people of God. He said, Moses, I want you to tell him that God is calling us to do the greatest thing. And the greatest thing is the love. And God is calling us toward the greatest one, and that is God himself. In the greatest way with all that comes in contact with us. He said, look, Moses, make sure you instruct the men. He said, look, make sure your families love God. Because, man, if, you're, if you do not love God, then your children would not love God. If you do not stand, if you will not stand for God, then your children and your family will not stand for God. To love God and to do uh, of the will of God is to succeed uh, in life. Let me say that again. If, if you're going to be able to, to do and love God uh, and do God's will, uh, you will succeed uh, in life. That's period. That's nothing else that I can add to that. If you love God and you, if you are in the will of God, you will uh, succeed. So what we must do is uh, we must get our families within uh, the will uh, of God. And we must get our boys to love God. We cannot play in this life and play in this generation uh, in which we have right now. We're having boys who are hurting uh, because men are hurting. And you cannot help somebody if you are hurt yourself. But if we get men uh, with the heart of God, if we get a man that loves God with, with all his heart, with all his mind, and with all his strength, then he all immediately, once he embraces that, he also instills that in his children. So what I'm saying to do this morning is we need to fully engage with God. In this man cave, you got to fully engage with God because life returns on our investments. If you make an investment in your children, you'll always get a good return. Oh, preaching here today. Because you understand, a football coach, uh, uh, he comes and tells his team, put your shoulder into it. A construction worker says, put your back into it. 
a chemistry, a uh, teacher said, put your brain into it. So Jesus said, put your heart, put your soul, uh, put your mind, uh, and become fully engaged in God. Because when we are fully engaged in God, uh, we always get a good return uh, on our investment. Because if I invest in God, God in turn invests in me. Y'all didn't understand. He said, Moses, I will bless you. And everybody that you bless, they're going to bless you back. And those that, that curse you is going to get a curse from me. Because Moses, I mean, Abraham, brother, I am and will uh, bless your life. Yes, this morning, brothers and sisters, we must put our heart, we must put our mind and we must put our soul uh, in, in that will uh, and the work of God. And I, wanna, I want you to put down one thing this morning before we get any further, that when we seek God with our heart, with our mind, and with our soul, every part of our life benefits. My God, I'm telling you, when you love God with every fiber of your being, Everything in your life benefits. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you benefit in all areas of your life because when you put God first, then God automatically gives you the benefit of being a, a believer in God. That I don't just love him on Sunday. I love him on Monday. I don't just have him in my mind on Sunday. I have him in my mind every day of my life. So when I invest in God, God always invests in me because I get life benefits from what I receive from God. So, so Moraine, what are you saying? Let me tell you, let me, let, let, let me get it to you right quickly. Moses told us precisely in this text, if we instill this truth into our children's life, then our children will love God. He's not saying the women. I'm, I'm challenging the men because I believe if we get our men loving God, then we'll have our families loving God. Because I tell you, brothers and sisters, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, it reads like this. It said, and uh, these words, Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7, he said, these are the commandments that I give to you today. And these are the words which I command thee this day, that he said, yeah, that, you, that you shall be and shall be in your heart. And he said, verse 7, he said, thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when thou sit in thy house and when thou walk by the way and when thou lie down and when thou rise up. Moses, look, I want you to impress this message on your children. Talk about me when you sit down in the house. He said, when you walk along the road, when you lie down at night, when you get up, I want you to talk about me to your children. Because if you impress them on you, on me, on them, uh, then their life will be wrapped within me. So what I'm telling us this morning is children develop an appetite for God. When they see their dad and mom truly loving and walking with God. Let me say that again. I said, children, create an appetite for God when they see their mom and their dad loving and walking with God. Let me say it one more time. I said, children, create an appetite for God if they see their parents loving God. So when they see it in you, they see God working in you, they automatically pick up your belief in God. All of us, all of us have believed in God based on what our parents told us. Y'all ain't going to understand me. Our parents was the first person to lead us toward God. And we believe God because they believe God. Moses said, look, when, when, you, when God answers your prayer, Dad, tell your children God answered that prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah. When God bless you, sit and tell your children God bless you. When God changes your heart, 
or helps you overcome a temptation, celebrate it with them. Oh, my God. When, when, when you go through a tough season in your family and it, it's a rough situation and you been laid off your job and you've gone through persecution, let them see the strength of your faith in action. Because if they see that from you, it would create a faith in God uh, with them. Oh, my God, here today. I'll tell you, when you are, when you are, you got to help them fall in love with God. Help your children fall in love with God. So because you don't have to be an eloquent speaker. You don't have to be seminary trained to tell your children about what God has done. It's just simple as this. Did you, while, while you walking along, while you're at home, you got to say, did, did you know or uh, 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 hey, by the way, by, by the way, we made it through this because God brought us through it. Just in passing, just in conversation, you ought to lost your job and your bills are being paid. You ought to turn and tell your children, we making it because God helping us make it. You got to sit there and tell your children and, and moment by moment and because that means a, a lot to a child to see his parents exemplifying faith in God. So when you sit down, Moses said, talk to God, your children about me. He said, when you lay down at night, tell your children God is a great God. And you start talking God in your house, it'll be in their children's heart. Oh, Moraine, preach in a way because I tell you, this man came this morning. There, there are a lot of men who, who may be going to tune me out, but I tell you, men, don't turn it off. Uh, no, don't turn that off. I, I haven't even, got, even cleared my throat yet. I haven't even got halfway into this message. Don't turn it off yet because I haven't even gotten on your street yet. I'm just trying to get you to, first of all, uh, recognize that you need to fall in love uh, with God. And then when you fall in love with God, your children will fall in love uh, with our God. Because every now and then, that has to be a heart-to-heart. -heart. has to be a heart-to-heart -heart conversation because people tend to embrace uh, the teachings and the beliefs uh, of those who love them the most. Oh, my God. They, they tend to uh, pick up the beliefs uh, and the teachings from people uh, that love them the most. They are much more likely to accept the truth if you teach it and deliver it from a loving heart. They will accept what you say because it comes from a heart relationship because whoever, whoever uh, has their heart uh, has their ear. Oh, my God. Whoever has a child's heart uh, will get his ear because you understand uh, they see you and they hear what you are saying. And when you are talking about God, uh, God will bless your life. That's why he closed in the Bible in Malachi Chapter 4, verse 6, he closed the word by telling the, the fathers to be strong and to lead your children uh, and lead your young men uh, to be stronger and better young men. I, I come to tell you today that if we get strong men, we can make strong young men. We are hurting in the African-American community because we don't have enough strong men taking a stand. And coming back and giving a heart-to-heart -heart talk with their children. And when this doesn't happen, fathers invite the curse of a broken relationship. Oh, my God. When you are not investing in your boy, you bring in a curse of a broken relationship. That you must lift this curse off of your house. Man, you got to get this curse off of your children. Because you have failed uh, to instill in your children uh, and especially your boys uh, the love uh, of Almighty God. I'm preaching here today. Because look, listen to me. The, the first point that I want you to put down is this. How fathers lose heart. I don't have much more time. How fathers lose heart. Yeah, yes, that's the first thing. How does fathers lose the heart of their children. And when a father loses his child's heart, he loses that child. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 says, Father, 
provoke not your children to anger. And he said, least they be discouraged. He said, don't. He said, do fathers, do not uh, uh, lead your children to frustration. But before telling us to train and to instruct our children, he said, don't frustrate them or make them embitter before their life gets started. He said, fathers, make sure you, you lead your children in the right way. Because this is what I want you to type down right quickly. Before, because if we lose their hearts, we lose everything. Oh, my God. Make sure you put that in. If you lose their, if we lose their hearts, we lose everything. Because if I can't get his heart, I can't get his ear. But if I get his ear hard, I got his ear. Because he wants to make sure that he feels a hard love from his dad. You say, you say, Moraine, if I get his heart, I got his ear. Yes, if you get his heart, you'll get his ear. But if you lose his heart, you're going to lose his ear. He will not listen to you if he don't feel that coming from your heart. Preaching here today. Stephen, uh, uh, Stephen Kendrick and Randy uh, Alcorn wrote a book on, on resolution. And they wrote a book, uh, a, a, a movie about courageous situations. And in that, in that book and in that movie, they gave some warnings about hard hindrances. They gave some warnings, I think, that we ought to look at of how we lose our son's heart, how we lose our children's heart. And we cannot sometimes claim it back until we come into repentance and say, well, I made a mistake. I didn't do it like I should have. And I came today to tell you there are some things that we can, we can warn ourselves before we lose our children's heart. The first thing is absence. Can you all say absence? He said the first thing is absence. You got absence. They said, well, a man uh, uh, abandons his children all at once or never, or is never home because he's always working. What happens in that child, he loses his child's heart because he's absent. Oh, my God, he's absent. You see, and he sends a signal to his children. And he sends a signal that you're not important enough for me to prioritize. That you're not so important that I have not made you a priority in my life. And when a man is absent, that allows that child uh, to lose heart. Preaching here today. He'd lose heart because he don't know where his daddy is. His dad is not there. He may be not doing anything bad. He may do, be doing something good, but he's not at home. And he feels like he's been abandoned. And I'm telling you, that will make a child uh, lose heart. And I'm trying to get us to understand, not no, no, is he absent, but the next thing that hurts a child's heart is harsh criticism. Yeah, harsh criticism. In other words, what I'm saying to you is that uh, a dad can be sometimes unnecessarily, and moms as well, can be unnecessarily uh, hard on their children. Who preaching here? You can, be, you can be too hard on your children. And when you're too hard on your children, it may not be much to you, but it hurts them. To you, it might be a small chisel, but to them, it's a crushing hammer. Oh, my God, here today. When you're too hard on your children, never call your children names. Oh, my God. Ne never call your children out of their name. Ne never embarrass your children in public. Oh, my God. I'm preaching better than y'all. It's even saying, saying never, never, never uh, uh, call your children unnecessary names. And don't be sarcastic or belittling your children. That's harsh criticism. Don't ever make your child feel small. You got to make sure that your child always feel, have boldness of heart. But when you got harsh criticism and unnecessary hardness, it hurts your child and your child loses heart. Oh my God. It makes them not want to hear what you got to say because all they ever heard from you is negative stuff. All they ever heard from you is putting them down. Every time you're in front of, they're in front of your friends, you talk about he ain't this and he ain't that. But that hurts that child. It says, don't, that, that don't hurt him. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It puts something in him that would forever be in his heart because he feels like his dad don't like him. Next thing that he does is, is that they say favoritism. Favoritism. Be careful how you handle your children. Be careful 
how you choose one child over another. Who preached, Marina? Because less favorite become resentful. They become resentful when you are favoring one over another. If you have favorites, favorites, make sure it's all of them. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Because when you choose uh, one child uh, over another, it hurts that child uh, for the rest of his life. Come on here, priest Moraine. Rachel and Leah fought each other. Are y'all here? Uh, Joseph had a problem with his brothers. They hated him because his daddy had a faith. And whenever you got favorites, it causes dissension uh, within your children. So be careful that you don't have favorites, but make every one of your children favorites. Make all of them feel like they're the best in front of you. Make every one, I don't care what his grade may be, you love him the same. Don't love one because he make an A and another make a C. You love him until he start making an A. Don't make favoritism. Don't have harsh criticism. And do not be absent, uh, be an absentee father. Next thing I got to tell you is not only that, that, that you should not have favorites, but the next thing that helps you lose heart with your children is hypocrisy. Ooh, my rainy, my rainy. You hypocrisy. What that is, let me say right away, no one is perfect. But preaching one thing while doing another is totally different. Breaking promises and refusing to apologize will kill trust between you and your children. If you make your children a promise, make sure you keep it. If you told them, I'm coming to pick you up, make sure you pick them up. If they don't pick them up, make sure you call and say, well, I'm running late. And I can't get you today, but I'll be there tomorrow. Don't be a hypocrite, priest Moraine. Don't, don't, don't say one thing and, and do another. You say, Moraine, are you trying to make me a perfect man? No, I'm not saying that you're a perfect man. I'm trying to get you to understand, do not be a hypocrite. And a hypocrite is somebody to wear a mask. A hypocrite is somebody to pretend to be something that they are not. Do not pretend uh, with your children because you are hurt them uh, for the rest of their life because all they know is that daddy never keeps his word. Oh, my God, here today. Not only, not only do not be a hypocrite, but next thing I want to tell you, do not hurt their mother. Oh, my God. Do not hurt their mother. Oh, my God, what, what do you say? Do not hurt their mother. Children are confused, and they are betrayed when their father hurt their mother. Oh, my God, don't, don't, don't hurt their mother. Do not say bad things about their mother. Because if you hurt their mother, that's a problem with the child. Because since they are commanded by God to honor their mother, you need to make sure you defend her and not attack. I know you may not be through whether it's been divorced, whether it's been some type of unfaithful situation. You don't like her anymore. He don't, she, she don't, you're not in love with her anymore. But I tell you one thing. You was one night you was in love with her. Yeah, two nights you were in love with her. Two months you loved her. So do not bring children into the world and hurt. That mother, y'all better hear what, what I'm saying today. Don't hurt that mother because if you teach them to dishonor her, they're going to dishonor you. <laughs> y'all ain't got to hear that. I tell you, if you teach your children to dishonor their mother, eventually they're going to dishonor you. Because I tell you, a boy loves his mother, and when he sees his father loving his mother, whether they are together or not, and some may not be with that, that mother, but I tell you, you can still show her love. You can still show her kindness, but do not hurt their mother. Because if you hurt their mother, then you lose their heart. You lose their heart. I tell you, I tell you, I'm preaching better than you feeling right now, but I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you the truth. And I'm speaking from this man cave situation that I'm telling you, if you're absent, you're going to lose their heart. If you're a hypocrite, you're going to lose their heart. If you got hard criticism, you're going to lose that heart. If you are hurting their mother, it's going to lose their heart. If you got favorites, you're going to lose their heart. But I, almost, I'm almost done here this morning, but I tell you, not only should you make sure you don't lose your heart, but daddy, 
You need to capture your children's heart. <laughs> not only should I not lose heart, I got to make sure I capture their heart. In other words, what you got to do now is you got to turn the corner. You got to turn the corner. And you got to make sure when you turn the corner, you got what your children really need. And I know this ain't a sermon that you want to hear. You rather hear me hooping and hollering. But when I, you get finished hooping and hollering, you still got a problem in your house. And I, it's, you know, you can just go so far talking about God is good. You can just go far, so far saying he's good all the time. You got to say more than he's good. You got to say more than he's good all the time. And I'm trying to tell you right now, you got to bless your children. Man, you got to bless what God uh, has given you. And I know you say, well, I got to give him money. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about giving him you. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. No, you giving him money, you paying this and you paying that, but he does not have you. So what you got to do is capture, capture your children's heart. Well, Rainey, how did I turn this corner? I done messed up so many years of my life, and I need to turn this corner. I can't get back with my children, but maybe God has left you here to do something with your grandchildren. Who preaching here today? <laughs> Maybe God has left you here so you can instill something uh, within your grandchildren. I, I, I missed it with my children, but I'm going to make sure I make it up with my grandchildren. I'm going I'm to give them what I failed to give my own children. Through my own ignorance, I didn't bless my own children, but I'm going to make sure I bless my grandchildren. And some of y'all trying to leave all your children money when they leave. That's good. That's well, and you ought to leave them something when you leave here, but while you here, you ought to bless them. <laughs> Don't wait until you die to bless them. Bless them now. When I got three things, I'm done this morning. What, what I need to do is, I'll tell you how to bless your children, giving your attention. Oh, my God. Give your children your attention. Yeah, they, they, really, they really need your attention. They really need to see you. They really need to feel you. And when you give your children their, your attention, it does something within their hearts. You know, a girl loves uh, a dad's night out. <laughs> a girl would love to be out just with her dad, and they going out on a date night. That's giving her some attention. I'm, I'm, I'm going to catch you in a minute. I say that's giving her some attention. I'm going to get on your street right quickly. Nona does a girl like date night. Boys ought to get a date night. Yeah, yeah. You ought to have a date night or a men's night out. It's just going to be us boys hanging together. I'm just going to take you to the movies. Y'all, oh my God. I, I'm going to take you to the movies. Just us. And I'm going to dinner with my son. And what's happening, then you are putting something in your boy that will be with him for the rest of his life because you gave him a day of attention. You, you blessed that boy. You, you blessed him by sitting there just doing something between you and him. Nobody else, just the two of y'all. If you got three boys, you got to have all three of them together. Have a night out with all the guys. Have a day out with your girl because when you do that, you bring some attention on their life. Preach, Marina. Another thing you need to do, and I'm almost taking up my seat, next thing you need to do is you need to affirm your children. It ought to be some affirmation. It ought to have some affirmation. Look, both children and adults want to be approved. Yeah, yeah, they want to have approval and praise from their dad. They need to hear you praise them. They need to hear that you do something. They want their father's blessing in their life. Uh, to bless means to speak well of. They need to hear you say something good about them. All they've ever heard is you just a so-and-so. They need to stop hearing you say they're so-and-so and say, boy, you're going to be somebody. All they need is somebody just to push them just a little bit. They need affirmation. And Numbers chapter 6, and I'll tell you, it's a great blessing. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 27, it's, it reads like this. It says, the Lord bless thee. And keep you. That's what you're doing. You, you're telling your son, the law going to bless you and keep you. And I'll tell you one thing. Ain't nobody that's been blessed by God has all been kept by God. 
Because <laughs> only when he bless you, I know he'll keep you. <laughs> and I know I ought to have somebody writing something down right now saying he done bless me, but he been keeping me. <laughs> I got somebody listening right now on Saturday bed say, yes, I've been blessed better than blessed. But more than just being blessed, he been keeping me. And it ought to be somebody listening to me this morning saying, God is a keeper. Oh, God is a keeper, and when God keep you, can't nobody do any harm to you. I say he's a keeper. You ought to tell your children, God bless you, and God keep you. And then you tell them this, the Lord going to make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord going to lift up his countenance and give you some Preach, Marina. He, look what he said. You tell your children, look, the Lord is going to lift up your countenance. And God is going to give you some peace. I like what the message Bible says about that text. It says that I look you full in the face. I'm going to make you prosper. <laughs> you got to look at your child, your son in his face. And tell him, God going to make you prosper. Yes, God. I want to affirm you right now. Boy, you're going to prosper. Boy, you're going to do good in life. I, I tell my own son, you're going to do good. It may not be looking good now, but hang on in there because I'm blessing you. I'm affirming you by saying the Lord going to bless you. And the Lord going to come right into your face. You know, when someone, when I come from South Memphis, when somebody would raise their head, it ain't always that they would be talking. It's sometimes just by the language of their head. Back then, when, when somebody raised their head in front of you, that mean they affirm you. <laughs> that mean they were looking at you. They, they saw you. In other words, you, you, you walking down the street, they just, they, they, they don't say nothing. They just kind of nod their head. Just, what that said, you know, when you walk down the street and see someone, all they say, they raise their head, head up, and then they say, what's up? Then you say, it's all good. <laughs> what they did was they affirmed you. What They, they head up. Then they said, what's up? You said, well, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. What you did was you affirmed them. What you did was you gave favor on that. What's up? It's all good. And I came to tell you right now, that's what you got to do to your son. You got to raise your head up and say, man, it's all good. <laughs> it's what's going on. It's all good. And what you're doing is you, you, you got to work. God woke us up this morning and God raised up his head. He said, what's up? He said, it's all good. <laughs> I said, no matter what you got up with this morning, you got to look up and say, God, it's all good. Because no matter what goes on in my life, it's all good. What's up? It's all good. Because God raised up his head and gave you a blessing and gave you some more joy. And I came to tell every man, raise up your head and affirm your children and make them feel like they somebody. Bless your children. Bless your children. Good morning. That's all I came to tell you. No, you need to make sure you affirm and make sure, make sure you give them some attention. But next thing you ought to have is affection. Oh my God, you ought to have some, some affection for your children. I know, I know, I know how it is. Men are not always affectionate. Men ain't not always showing affection for their children. Moms always kissing on their children and kissing on their boys. But you know, I didn't grow up being a kissing from a kissing family. My dad didn't kiss me every day. He didn't kiss me every year, every, every month, but I knew he loved me. I knew he cared something about me, but I tell you, man, you need to have some affection for your children. And I hope the Bible says, Romans 5 and 5, he said, hope make not a shame because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Ghost who has been given to us. I tell you this morning that God, oh my God, I said God wants you to show some affection. Show your boys some affection. Show your girls some affection. Whether you received it, oh my rainy, whether you received love from your father or not, you need to make sure you pour out affection on your own children. In other words, you got to break the chain. That no matter what happens, you got to break the chain. I, I, I'm not the most affectionate person in the world. But they almost to break me to be that. You know, when we leave and depart each other now, my sons and I, we always, we now embrace. I didn't always just kind of go all the way with it. 
because I want all that affection myself. But now it's meaning more to me as I get older. You got to learn how to just go on and brave because you don't know if that might be your last time that you got to show some love and show some affection. Let me tell you this, as I learned over the years, that boys who feel love, oh my God, about their dad, they're more bolder, they're more stronger, they're more kinder because they have love from their dad. And girls who feel love from their dads don't have to, oh, Priest Moraine, they're not radiant, they're more radiant girls, and they, they're, less, they're less desperate for a boyfriend. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, when, when a dad loves his daughter, she ain't just running after every man she sees. Because one thing she learned, how dad loves her. Well, if a man never loves her, her dad has shown her how to be loved. And then she's more careful when she marries somebody. Good morning, y'all. That's all I can. I don't know why I went a little longer than I maybe should have, but I had a lot to say. Because in this man cave, you got to learn how. To bless your children. I'm not talking about what you're going to leave them when they die. I'm talking about how you're going to bless them while they're alive. And when you bless them, God blesses you. One thing I want to tell you, I want you to do is invest in your children. If you don't do anything else, make sure you invest in them. And the last thing I want you to type this morning is this. God is going to bless you so well until the devil hates you. <laughs> oh, my God, today, I'm happy as I can be. I said, God is going to bless you so well that the devil going to hate you because <laughs> you're blessing your children because you're blessing your family. God's going to bless you until the devil hates you. <laughs> no, the devil don't hate nobody because the devil wants us to hate each other. But I told y'all something more than you wanted to hear. I said, God is about to bless you and the devil going to hate you by what God is about to do. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I know if somebody listening to me right now need God to bless their life, and all I'm saying is God is going to bless you until the devil hates you. And I want him to hate me because God's going to do something in me because I want to be a better daddy. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better man because when you are automatically leading your family, you're leading your God in your life. Bless you today. God keep you today. Bless your children. That's what's coming out of this man came. Not what team you like. No. Not what your football team is. You need to bless your children. And you need to bless them right now. The door of the church is open as she comes to bless us in music. This morning, we pray that you Get a word while you're sitting on your bed to be invite God into your situation. The door of the church is open that you can accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. You need some, your children need your attention. They need affirmation. God knows they need some affection. When you bless your boys, your boys, Bless this world. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word.
then I am your friend. You know my name. You And oh, how you comfort me, Lord. Oh, how you counsel me. And it still amazes me yes, that I. So now I pour out my heart to you. Hearing your presence, I am made new. I'm going to say that just one more time, y'all. So now I pour out my heart to you. Cause hearing your presence, I am made new. Jesus, you know my name. Oh, you know my name. How sweet it is, Jesus. You know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. It's so amazing.
and it still amazes me, yes, that I am your friend. Praise God for you uh, this morning. This is an opportunity that we can uh, set aside a part of our worship to give to the glory of God and for the kingdom of God. We pray today that you would honor God with your first fruits of your giving. When you honor God, God overflows your, your life and overflows your family, overflows your finances, because it is always a blessing to give. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So we pray that you would take this opportunity to send something now to Gillify, or you can mail your, your gifts in, or you can bring your gifts by the church. We just want you to stay faithful and committed to your call of God and the ministry of giving. And I love you today, and I pray that you would just follow God as you give. Follow your heart, follow your mind as you give to the glory of God. God bless you today as you give, and I know you're going to do it because I believe in you and God believes in you. God trusts us with our gifts, and all he asks for just very little in return. Please be a blessing. Whether you're a member of this church or connected to it, you say, I just want to bless this ministry. Well, this is your opportunity to bless this ministry. You can do it right now by sending something to this church to continue this ministry, continue the kingdom work that we are trying to do at the St. Luke Church. God bless you and may God keep you. We praise God for this day and we certainly pray that you have been blessed by this worship experience that, that the men will develop and help evolve boys into men. And as we need you, God needs you to become the man that he needs to be in these last and evil days. I charge you today, I challenge you today to make a resolve that you are going to bless your children. Bless them with your attention. Affirm them. And I pray, God, that you will have affection for them. Then I pray that every man, that you have, if you've lost your children's heart, that you make sure you get his heart back. Because if you don't have his heart, you won't have his ear. But if you get his heart, you will have his ear. I pray from my heart that if you are, have hurt his mother, repent of it. If you have been a hypocrite, repent of it. If you've been absent, repent of it. If you have shown favoritism, repent of it. Change. I tell you, God will bless your family. You cannot redo what's already done, but you can make the best of what you have left. Make sure that you become the man best in his too. God bless you. May God keep you. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. And I give you praise and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every man. I pray for every family. Because if we don't get the family right, God, we can't get the church right. And I pray, God, that every family that's listening to me, that they will be blessed by the word of God. That you would encourage men to help our boys. Thank you right now, God. Give you praise and honor. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Now that him was able to keep you from falling and set your presence. Paul this in the presence of Almighty God. The only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, his Lord, our dominion, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. I pray that you will share this message. Please share it. Pass it around all over. Share it on Facebook look at the YouTube that you will be able to bless somebody be a witness to help somebody's family. Amen. Uh, I thank y'all. <laughs>